Hello, Spark fans. Welcome back to Advancing Spark, where today we're having a discussion about ML Flow 2.0. So you might have seen this announced last week, that whole blog post that went out talking about ML Flow 2.0, what it is, all the new features, all everything that goes into it. Uh, and yeah, it's quite a lot. And it seems like it's a big celebration from the ML Flow team. There's a lot that's gone into it. And it's kind of a big, it's always whenever you see a 2.0 place reach, it's no longer the first stable release. It's no longer the first thing. It now actually shows a real evolution in the tool in terms of where it's got to. It's the second big, stable, major release with a whole load of features. So, yep, yeah, lots going on in there. So, as always, if it's your first time around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. But what we're going to do today is just have a step through the features. What's being announced? What's in this new release? What does it mean? What are we excited about? All of that stuff. Now, as always, you know that I'm, I'm a data engineer. I don't do that data science stuff. And so we've actually got a guest who you'll all know, uh, Gavi is back to help us out today. Although I think I need to say newly minted Microsoft AI MVP, Gavi. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, Simon. Thank you for having me back. Right, so you're welcome. Welcome. Always welcome to come and talk about this stuff. So, yeah, it's big news in ML Flow land. Exactly right. MLflow 2.0 reaching 10 million downloads, uh, 10 million downloads a month, Simon. I know, and that, that is insane. That is a number in terms of just, as it says, most successful uh, and popular open source MLflow framework. So yeah. MLflow has been in for a long time. We've seen it around, but just again, that reaching kind of um, a milestone as to how adoptive it is. Exactly. It's great. Absolutely. And I, I guess it's a testament to the community as well, right? With um, the amount of people that are involved in getting ML flow to the level it is now that's a huge success for everybody involved yeah. in ML ops and uh, ML ops ML flow 2.0 that's fair and again with all these things when we talk about uh like integration frameworks when we talk about any kind of framework that should make working together easier the more people that you know use it the more widespread it is the better these things are exactly. you know, so hopefully that also means that other tools also adopt it so if you're pulling in other platforms, if you're deploying a model somewhere else, building it in another ML automation tool, the more popular these frameworks are, the more likely those other esoteric tools in, in the industry are going to go, oh, by the way, we integrate with MLflow because it's the most popular, biggest, commonly adopted one. Exactly. So, hey, makes a lot of sense. Can, you can see that happening already, right? There's so many tools out there that's integrated with MLflow. So that's already happening. Cool. Yeah, that's good. Major benchmark and... Congrats to the team and the community and everything for getting there. It is kind of insane. Um, and then, yeah, we need to talk about this thing, MLflow 2.0. Yeah, so MLflow 2.0, Simon, when we were, what, five months ago now, when we were mm -hmm. at the Data AI Summit, we saw a preview to MLflow 2.0, so it was exciting five months ago, right? And the whole drive behind MLflow 2.0 was to just help data scientists speak the language that machine learning engineers and data engineers speak um, yeah. and just to help productionize models so last week as you might have seen in social media linkedin and twitter ml flows released now and we're here to talk about all the cool features and updates that come with it um so just just kind of three major announcements from ml flow 2.0 uh it's their drive is to make ml ops a lot easier with mm -hmm. ml flow recipes They've also got a new refresh core user interface. Yep. And they've got production ready model evaluation API that we'll just t uh, briefly talk about. All right. So let's have a look at what these things are. Yeah. So, firstly, we've got, we got the history slide. Uh, yeah. I mean, I was surprised when you showed me this slide that MLflow has been out live as 1.0 since June 2019. Exactly. Yes. For me, this is quite interesting just to see how it's moved from 2019 from MLflow 1.0 to now well, it, it's 2022 and it's MLflow 2.0 now and back back you know three years ago back then when it was MLflow 1.0 the objective was just to make machine learning workflow a lot easier than it previously yeah. was and they were and it was successful in doing that we had the four major components that we saw we still use it um, very much day in, day out. If you're working with MLflow, those are the four components that you'll be very familiar with and be using constantly, right? MLflow 2.0 today is about simplifying and accelerating machine learning mm -hmm. model deployment. And what they've really done is they've listened to extensive feedback from users and they've implemented a, a lot of the feedback and to really to help the data scientists out there to get 
to, just to make sure the workflows are a lot easier and, and they can work together just a lot easier with machine learning engineers. Cool. Oh, that makes sense. All right, so let's, let's dig in. Let's go and have a look at the bits and pieces inside 2.0, inside that big announcement blog. Um, you mentioned this one earlier, MLflow pipelines? Well, five months, ago, five months ago, it was announced as MLflow pipelines. So the major announcement here, it's been rebranded to MLflow recipes. And that's, so, you know, when you've got a new tool that you want to include and you rebrand it halfway through going live, that's just a recipe for this. No, <laughs> Cool. So, I mean, so we, we talked about it a little bit at the time when we when we first saw that announcement of MLflow pipelines, but I'm going to give it a bit of a recap. So what is an MLflow recipe? How does it work? What are people doing? Okay. I'm, I mean, MLflow recipe. So have you heard of Metaflow and Kadro, Simon? <laughs> no. So, <laughs> so if you've heard of Metaflow, I think they were originally developed by Netflix mm -hmm. and Kadro by Quantum Black. I think they're owned by McKinsey Company. It's very, very similar, right? MLflow recipes aims to accelerate machine learning projects from pilot to production. How are they doing this? They've included a framework providing us with templates that have got step-by-step -step procedures. And and that just makes production a lot quicker and easier. Yes. Cool. And I think when we had a look at the very, very first preview, it's all about the modularization. It's about creating scripts and saying, run that part and breaking your things into steps. And all of those good pieces that just mean your development is better. You're no longer having your data science training model being one gigantic bit of spaghetti yes. code that ends up exactly. in a mic. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Also, by having it into in a very modular, it makes testing a lot easier. Um, it's not just a, a testing. mess. Testing. Testing. Amazing. <laughs> All the things that you need to be doing and considering if you're deploying machine learning yep. models. So, okay, and, and a lot of that, it feels like maturity, right? It feels like people back in the day, they were just trying to do a model. The fact they could get a model that scored something was kind of amazing in itself. And now that it has become mainstream, it is more, much more common that people are actually building these things. It's reached that point of maturity where people need productionization. They need yeah. reliable deployments. They need a rigorous structured process for getting this code out. So it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, as data scientists years and years ago, you'd be quite happy just keep building a model using a Jupyter notebook. Yeah. But when it comes to productionizing that Jupyter notebook, it's, it requires a huge amount of effort and it can yeah. be very tedious, right? So this is trying to bridge the gap between um, data scientists experimenting with notebooks to productionizing machine learning models, which is what most businesses are facing, challenges they're facing at the minute, just getting the models to production. Makes sense. I mean, that's what it's all about, MLOps, right? It is, yeah, exactly, it is. So, yeah, what they've really done here is extended the capabilities as well. Yep. So if you move on to the next slide, we've got five months ago, we spoke about, we had a video that we spoke about regression in MLflow recipes, but now they've extended it classification. So effectively, if you've got projects that you are doing a regression problem, and regression problem is all about predicting continuous values. So if you've got um, a use case, for example, you're trying to predict how much your customers are going to spend on a product, or if you are a real estate agent trying to predict house prices, what's it, what, what's it going to look like in the next three months or six months? Yeah. You look at regression, and the template that's provided by Databricks will accelerate that deployment of your machine learning model. What they've also done is classification, as I just said. So again, that's about predicting a class of a given label. So if you are uh, use cases are predicting fraud is, is a very common classification use case, customer churn. If you're classifying emails or documents, you would look at classification. Yeah. Again, so we, we, we think we're going to see this much like when AutoML first came out. It was just very limited types of scoring, very limited types of business problem you could solve. And then as it's matured, as it's settled in, they're adding other algorithm types, they're adding other functionality. And we're going to see something similar here with recipes. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what else is there. I think the time series uh, forecasting being brought in or being considered as well. So I'm really looking forward to what, what else after regression classification, right? So just, just to help data scientists have a template that's ready to go if, if they're trying to solve common use cases as you yeah. would do in businesses, then it's all there ready for you to go. And play with it. yeah sounds good what they've also updated is the data profiling capabilities you know they've put a lot of effort into it so you can quickly have a look and understand your data sets 
see how your data is split, you know, your training and your testing and your validation and all that good stuff that you're missing values. It just, it's all in one. So if you run your recipes, you'd be able to see that immediately. And it's also got hyperparameter tuning capabilities, which is amazing. That's cool. Yeah. Have you had a have you had a play with it yet? I have had a play with it. So if you if you're willing to have me back and talk to you about data science, I can come back and show you a demo. Anytime, Kelly. After after the AA Christmas party, let's get that out of the way. Exactly. That's on tomorrow, Simon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. November. Mm. <laughs> cool. What All right, and then we've got our third piece. Yeah. Well, no. Before we go on to do that, what 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 we wanted to say, what I wanted to say is the ML flow. They've also integrated AutoML in ML oh, okay. space. So if you have, say, you're running regression, it'll automatically go and find out the best model for you and present it that as well. Oh, that's very cool. Well, Thanks. then you'll have to do a demo of that. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Move on. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh. yeah. So, yeah, the second uh, announcement is how they've put a lot of effort into the user interface. So when you if you if you've run experiments in MLflow or using MLflow within Databricks, what you would see is a slide is what is shown on the screen in front. So you'll see a generic set of experiments. If you've got a hundred experiments, they don't have unique names, right? You just see you just see what you see there, and it's very hard to filter through experiments. But what they've done now is, uh, yeah. So what they've done is they've got names unique names and memorable names so each run i i, I like from that what you're looking at traveling mule that's one of my favorite names <laughs> it made you sad though if you'd put all that work into making a model and then you don't like the generated name it comes up with i think it, it sounds fun it sounds exciting yeah. but i think the practicality is you if you had an experiment and you thought oh traveling mule was my best experiment you can remember it but also really? what they've done is they've also made sure to incorporate a pinning feature. Yeah. So if you ran hundreds and hundreds of experiments and you had five of your experiments that you wanted to pin, you can go onto your experiment uh, page and pin those respective experiments. That's cool. I mean, that, it's, so certainly kind of in terms of looking at the, the platform news and kind of keeping tabs on what's, what's changed month on month over the past few months, there's yeah. been a common theme of just going in and just tweaking the UI and making usability nice, making it easier to find things, adding a search so you can actually find various models that you've got. All of that stuff's been a real common theme. So I think that's kind of just all wrapped up into all the changes they've been making over the past few and months. You are. Yeah. yeah. So when I've had a play with it as well, if you wanted to search out of your 100 experiments, for example, looking at a particular metric, that's been made really easy as well. So cool. lots of really cool features into the UI. Just making it easier to find stuff, easy to manage, easy to Absolutely. live. <laughs> I like that. Easy to live. Yes. I'm about making life easy. That is how I'm going. I'm old. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. And then finally. Uh, yeah, the third announcement is production ready model evaluation API. I mean, from using MLflow, I was aware that the model evaluation was always there. But what they've said now, it's stable and production ready, right? So, and that, that was my question to you when, when I looked at this going, how production ready is it? Well, Sam, I'm not really sure. I mean, there's something I'm going to dig into deeper for sure and come back and, and talk to you about it. Yeah, I, I think it's worth getting, you know, we can put it through its paces. We can do a little bit of load balancing. We can just see actually how effective it is. About what scenarios can you go? Yeah, it'll nail it. It's absolutely great. And what scenarios you go, you might need to think about hitting it that much. And I don't know. I've not tried. Certainly not in its latest iteration. So yeah, definitely interesting. Yeah. So you know, if you had a model, you've got a data set, and you wanted to evaluate it, it's as simple as just running the command, you pointing it to your data set and the model, and it gives you all the metrics, all the performance stuff that you see on, on your screen. So pretty cool. So yeah. I like to see how it how it functions in in production environment. Yeah. Can you do? Is that something we'd we then think about building out into wider automation? So, you know, automated training, that kind of stuff, from like the um, model retraining, schema drift, that kind of stuff, because we've know. got that info? Yeah, I suppose. I guess you can evaluate it. So, it, it, yeah, maybe. Yeah, so you can automatically look at it, evaluate it, and have it report back a certain metric, see whether it meets a threshold or it's fallen yeah. below a threshold. Yeah. That's interesting stuff. Yeah, interesting. Cool. All right. 
yeah, those were the three three main things really that that came up from the blog. All really exciting stuff. And what I'd say is, if you wanted to get started with recipes, then the blog is certainly an, an article that you can refer to and look at all the cool things that's on there. Yep, and, and I'll pop a link to that blog down in the description below so we can go to it straight away. Yeah, there's templates as well. Really easy to use. I've used it many times. If you have a regression problem, a classification problem, grab those templates, download it, and have a look at it. Have a play with it. Very cool. One thing to right. note, though, with uh, MLflow recipes, you need to be spinning up uh, Databricks a runtime version more than 11. Version 11. Yeah. yeah. I think we should be on version 11 by now. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Uh, and obviously, I assume all of this stuff's going to need uh, the ML flavor of the cluster. Absolutely. And you get to this through the machine learning persona rather than the data science and engineering persona. All usual stuff, which everyone will be really used to if they're building models. Exactly. That's that's the only thing I know of, Simon. Machine learning persona. <laughs> it's the world. <laughs> also, well, thanks for joining, Gavi, and congratulations again on the MVP. Thank you very much, Simon. And yeah, absolutely going to drag you back to talk more of this stuff and put some of it through its paces, show us classification as a recipe. All sounds good. Anytime. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So yeah, absolutely. MLflow 2.0 is out and dangerous and live in the world. Go and have a look at the blog post and have a look at how the Databricks themselves are articulating all those changes. Try out some of the features and see how it's going. Certainly lots of things that we can see in there and lots of interesting stuff that we're looking forward to digging into. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let us know down in the comments if you're using any of this stuff yet. If you've been waiting for this to come out, were you waiting on MLflow recipes classification to come out so it can solve a business problem? Let us know down in the comments. And then, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers.